Hello and welcome back to FEM Expert. In today's tutorial, we're going to explain a couple of things about the eShape function in ANSYS APDL. We're going to get uh, right into it. So in order to explain what this function does, we have here a pre prepare model in which we have a volume, two areas, two beams in which, for which we defined beam type elements and three other lines for which we defined um, combination elements, a spring, a damper and a spring damper element. Also we have a key point for which we're going to create a mass element. Before we start we're going to look at some of the information from the ANSYS help. So the each shape function basically displays the elements with shapes determined from the real constants or section definition. In, an, in other words, it shows the elements, some of the elements, with a more realistic look uh, that is very helpful to understand or to verify, to understand what type of elements or to verify the model and check if we have assigned some of the properties correctly. So we're going to get into this and this model has been previously prepared. So we're just going to proceed to model because the e shape as its name, its name kind of says it, it, it only works for elements. So we have to have elements, which means we have to mesh. So we're going to do a V sweep, V sweep for this volume type element. So there we, here we obtain a vo volume type element. We're going to do a plot, a mesh, comma p. Here we have the areas, and we're going to do l plot, and we're going to do l mesh, comma p. We're going to perform the meshing of all of these lines, l plot, and then we're going to do k, k mesh, comma p, and we're going to do this. So I'm going to deactivate the, the e shape action, uh, option that I had it activated before. So it's e shape zero zero. And when we look at the elements, we will see normally is the volume type elements as volumes defined, clearly defined by their geometry, the shell elements as shells with their elements, with the meshing. The beam elements are always lines that if you, we need to check on how many lines we can activate the numbers or, the, or by colors, or things like that. Well, if we activate the e-shape, which would be activated with one comma one, if we look into the help for doing that, we're going to activate the scaling factor. So we're going to use real constants or sections definitions from solids. And we're going to also put the key one, which you should use as the initial thickness of in the displaced solid shapes or the displaced shell elements. So we're going to get go here and we're going to refresh. So what are we going to obtain from the, the activation of this E shape element is for the volume type elements, nothing really changes. So it is not necessary to be used then for shell for uh, shell type elements. It show, shows us the thickness and how it has been defined. Um, you can see here there's an overlapping here on the shell elements. This is not a realistic shell uh, thickness. It's a a graphical estimation or it's a it's a it's a graphical pre representation of the thickness in this shell if this the shell type element has been defined to have the thickness inside or outside or not as a medium fiber it will also take that into consideration and it will show us the model as it has been defined in the case of bean type elements as you can as i have mentioned previously you'll have the section that has been defined and in this case, we have a square section, a circular section. And what you can see here in the section is the number of integration points. They are defined in, they are shown in the ANSYS help for the 180A element, which is the beam. And can be changed if we desire more integration points for different calculation reasons. Here we have a elastic element in which we only define the elastic constant and it kind of looks like a spring. On the right, we have a elastic element on which we define only the damping, damping coefficient. And it actually looks like a damper. And on the third one, we have a combination element in which we define it both. Although it will always look as a spring if it has the spring constant. Also, on the mass element, we can see 
that uh, the mass has been transferred into a weird uh, square with a, cent with a circle in the center of mass is not a very easy to understand uh, icon, but is basically the mass, uh, the mass element. In this case, uh, I rather like, I rather prefer the, if we go back to the zero, zero, I rather prefer the no normal representation for the mass element, which is very uh, easy to understand and to look at. So I'm gonna go back so you can check once more the results. And here you have uh, other types of elements will have other representations. So you can try to create them, mesh them and check uh, how do they look. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to our channel and share our links. Thank you for watching.